Welcome everyone, I'm Sandy Andrew, your host of the Universal Learning Series radio show, where we discover the spiritual and scientific universe. On this edition of the show, we'll be uh, featuring the author, Elizabeth Ann Hill, and discussing her audiobook, Interview with the Universe, and her own spiritual journey. With the help of gifted transmedium, the late Glenna Dietrich, Elizabeth had an extraordinary conversation with a group of multi-dimensional beings known as the Guides. As part of the project, Elizabeth embarked on a life-changing journey in which she let go of all traditional safety nets, including a car, a job, and even money, and discovered that her supply was endless and overflowing. Along the way, Elizabeth overcame many obstacles and faced her biggest fears. She witnessed many things that will no longer work in the world as we move into higher consciousness. Elizabeth has now turned the corner and has begun the light-filled portion of her journey to discover all the things that will work as we make the long-awaited leap into higher consciousness. Please visit the website for the audiobook Interview with the Universe at interviewwiththeuniverse.com. And let's welcome Elizabeth Ann Hill to the Universal Learning Series radio show. Hello, yeah. Elizabeth. How are you? Oh, thank you. I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me. Thank once you again. for joining us. Yes, once again, thank you for joining us here this morning. Now, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that this week is the three-year anniversary of an interview with the universe. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct. Uh, and it was the Memorial Day weekend in 2008 that I made my tri- trip to Minneapolis where I met with uh, the, the now late Glenna Dietrich. She's since passed away uh, to create this uh, amazing project. So, And I didn't hadn't realized that until <laughs> just yesterday or the other day before that, wow, I'm doing this show and I always seem to get a radio show right on the anniversary, so this is an important opportunity, I guess, to speak about it again. Elizabeth, what brought about the desire um, to seek out someone like Glenna? How did that all shake down? Well, it was definitely, you know, one of those things that was planned, you know, long before I even came. We came into our bodies, you know, that type of thing, but right. um, I was... Uh, I lost my twin sister, as some people know the story. She was a United States Border Patrol agent that was killed in the line of duty, and uh, she revealed to me after she passed away a really remarkable, uh, you know, brought some very remarkable information through, and we wrote a book together after she passed called Twin Souls, A Message of Hope for the New Millennium, Mm -hmm. and uh, she's still revealing information to me, so there's even more coming in, but... Wrote this book, and then um, so I that kind of started me in this lifetime, anyway, on my spiritual journey. And I had just had such a strong de- desire to, you know, do something really big. And I started my own radio show, kind of like what you're doing. And I, I wanted like the biggest guest I could get. And well, of course, what's bigger than the universe? And uh, a friend of mine who had who had done a ra- did a radio show. His name is John Hodge, and he had put together a website to promote mediums and psychics and metaphysical practitioners. And he had asked me, would I be the guinea pig and and, inter- and have readings with all these people so that I could, um, you know, say whether they were or weren't real and, you know, what they said they were. And uh, one of them was Glenna. And uh, I had just read about her in a book that used to be, the book used to be Courageous Souls. It's now called uh, Your Soul's Plan by Robert Schwartz. And she was one of the four mediums featured in that book. And um, so I had just interviewed him on my show, and then here she came along, and she did an amazing um, spiritual counseling session for me. And then at the end, she she's like Edgar Casey; She can basically go to sleep, kind of, and then these beings are able to speak through her higher consciousness. And so they came and spoke to me, and and then they told me that I could ask questions, and I was so floored by this because I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but anyway, long story short, after that reading was over, I couldn't get over the fact that I could ask questions of these beings because, you know, I'm a question person. My Twin Souls book had a lot of questions and a lot mm-hmm. of answers as well. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to ask questions, and so I kept getting this feeling like there was more. There was more. There was something more to this. And so finally I asked Lena, can we do another, just the channeling part? 
And she normally would say no because she, you know, she takes a lot out of her to do the channelings, but she said yes because she felt compelled. And as I was preparing my questions for that session, I heard very clearly, you know, that, that still small voice, <laughs> interview with the universe. And I thought, well, that's it. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. And when we did the second channeling, they revealed that, yes, this is something that we had planned long before we came into our body, Glenna and I, and with these group of guides. And uh, and so that's how it came into being. And so I went to Minneapolis three years ago, to right at this time, and, and we did this amazing three-day recording session with me asking the questions and Glenna in a trance. She she didn't know any of the qu- any of the questions at all. And I just asked the questions and and. And then we recorded it, so you can download it and listen to it. It's on our website. And I'm writing a book that goes with it that's going to be <laughs> a lot more than what I thought it was going to be initially. It's quite a journey. So. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you're writing. You're currently writing a book about Interview with the Universe and perhaps one or two other things. Okay, but right. um, and, and that will be published sometime in the future. Now, Very getting good. back to this extraordinary um, Interview with the Universe – I had you on the show two years ago before um, Glenna passed away, uh, just yes. you, not Glenna. Now, I had the pleasure of listening to um, all three segments of um, an interview with the universe. What some of the things that struck you as very profound that, that came through Glenna from these well, inter- the guide? First and, first and foremost, I will I will talk a little bit about the questions and the answers but in the ultimate we were told that actually the the words the questions and the answers were actually on a, a tip of the iceberg actually of what people were getting when they listened to this because the 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 recording itself has been encoded what does that mean well they were supposed to be explaining it to get glenna and then she decided that it was her time to go, but since then I've had a, some other very gifted channels um, help me with this. But basically it's just like, you know, your conscious mind is listening to the questions and the answers, which are very profound right. and important, but they're also it's also a download of very high-frequency information brought in by these beings from all over the galaxy and, you know, angels, ascended masters and beings, just, you know, really high-frequency beings. They have encoded the recording. So when you're listening to it, you're listening to the question and answers, but on an unconscious level, you're getting this really high-frequency information. And a lot of people who have listened to this have felt healed, have felt shifted, have had major turns in their life where they went in a totally different direction that was more in line with their heart center. So there's a lot to it. It's not just the questions and answers. Uh, However, I did ask a lot. I mean, I had um, a total of 247 questions. And, you know, some of the things that they brought through were, you know, just an expanded awareness, you know, that we're in, we're going into this time of, of infinite possibilities, and people who follow the Mayan calendar will know that, you know, we are in that time frame right now, that, mm-hmm. that, that what we knew before is so different than what we understand now. There's just, the possibilities are limitless, and they said, you know, we're only telling you this because you're ready to hear it, but there's no one set, you know, this is my purpose and I must find it. It's just, it's your job to make a choice and the universe will support you. They talked a lot about that and we talked a lot about, well, you know, I asked, of course, what is the biggest mistake that human beings make? And they said unequivocally every single time, judgment. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> right. We're trying to, yeah, we're, we're we're trying to drop, what we're trying to do in this new um, shifting, the, 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 the evolutionary leap, is to drop the polarities. The polarities, you know, is what is what the 3D is all about. But in order to go into the next dimension, which is what we all are talking about, the polarities have to be released. And so judgment in any form is a polarity. It's a, it's an emotional attachment. It's so we talked a lot about that. Um, we talked a lot about just so many things, so many different things. But it was it was all very. Um, they wanted to focus on on simplicity. Because they wanted us to focus on the inner child, the truth of who we really are. They said that human beings are in such a struggle and, you know, struggling in fear, and it just hides that that truth of who we really are, that inner child, the the you know, and the oneness with all. And they said as we grow into this much more higher consciousness, the oneness won't just be, you know, a, an intellectual thing. It will be much more... A reality, and that is happening. It is happening. It's like we're going into this much greater and greater understanding that you know 
there's so, the, the oneness of all. There's really mm-hmm. we're not these separate bodies running around. And um, so they really wanted to try to refocus our attention not on what's happening in the world, not on what's happening in our communities, but the inner journey because, you know, the inner journey really is the outer journey. <laughs> And so those were some of the things that we talked about. It was, it was very, very profound. And and then what happened was that, and we can go into this if you ha- want to, but go I ahead. kind of went on a journey that kind of touched on every single thing that they talked about. I'm realizing now, <laughs> kind of everything that we talked about, I kind of got a piece of it in in, in experience, <laughs> experientially. Um, of you know the polarities were you know we're we're just in that time frame where we're starting to move out of that. So we kind of a lot of people are going through the real shadow, the shadow part of the journey, and that is very important and very necessary. And in actuality, they said all of it has to be embraced as sacred. We we cannot let go of 3D polarity and all of the stuff that goes with that until we can understand and know, actually understand is know inside ourselves that everything is sacred because it's all just kind of part of a sacred contract that we've taken on. Mm -hmm. uh, So you embrace the shadow, allow it, you know, and allow your inner voice to d- guide you through it, which is what I did. It's very powerful. Elizabeth, uh, would you say that people have to experience the sensations of fear, anger, and hate before they can truly walk in the light? I don't know that they have to, uh, but it'll, their own journey will tell them, you know, what it is that they that they have chosen to do. Not everybody mm-hmm. has chosen to do that, but a lot of people have, and I think that. Um, I, I heard this video the other day recently that explained it so beautifully. It said, you know, we've never gone through the darkness into the light in this way. Uh, it's never been that way before, and that's why the light and the love will never be hidden again. And so I don't know that I would say if that's what you have to do in order to go into the light, but I would say that embracing whatever shadows there are in, in that you know, in the world, in your life, that you would have to be able to embrace all of it as whole and sacred in order to to rise, raise your consciousness to a higher level. Right, right. Well, let me rephrase my statement there. Would you would you say that I think a person has to, shall we say, experience or be aware of the sensations of the dark side? Because if you if they don't know if you don't know that to the other side, then then how are you supposed to know where you are? Right. That's really I, I more, would, what, more what I was saying. Yeah. So I, I would say that they they probably would will. Everyone that has anyone that has ever you know ascended has gone through all these things, and they're just part of the wholeness. And so I would guess I would say that yes, you would definitely experience those things. And if you were to allow. You know, you can tell within yourself whether something is just a bad situation and you need to get away from it because it's not right, or if it's actually something that is part of your karmic path, it's part of your journey, and it may involve fear and it may involve um, all kinds of things. But, uh, yeah, I would say if they can embrace that and allow it and allow their higher self to guide them through it, that will bring them into the light in a much greater way. Yes. So what happened after Interview of the Universe? Um, how long was it before you decided to uh, let go of the, uh, shall we say, traditional lifestyle of a car job, uh, the money thing, and then do the, the David Carradine kung fu thing and, and walk the earth <laughs> like hey? <laughs> well, actually I had already done it because in 2007 I had let go of the, my job um, oh, out on, okay. on spiritual <laughs> Spiritual guidance, but see, I was still, I had, my father had passed and I had some inheritance, although there, it didn't come right away, so there were time periods where I lived without money. Right. But then there was a time period where my father, you know, there some money came from his estate and I lived on that, but it, on and off from 2007 onwards, there were times when I lived without the money, so, you know, and it was very, very fearful fear provoking. I mean, I was scared out of my mind because I it, in in 2007 I hadn't even had this conversation with the guide so I didn't understand what was happening. But right. then when we got after the interview and they had told us that both Glenn and I were going to face our biggest fears along the, with all the other, you know, we were going to have the polarities. I mean, we were going to have the shadows and we were going to have the light and and all everything in between. So it wasn't just about suffering and struggle, although the first 46 years of my life, I'd have to say, were 
there was a lot of beauty and a lot of miracles, but tremendous amount of shadow. And now I kind of feel like, okay, now the turning point has happened to go more towards the light part of it, which is a lot, what a lot of people are doing. I'm noticing it now. But I did, so starting in 2008, and in October of 2008 was when I really, it, everything that I had, you know, money, car, everything was just gone, and I was scared out of my mind. But I was guided. I was guided, you know, what to do, where to go, you know. And from that time on, I lived completely by my inner guidance. You know, people would step up out of the woodwork and offer me places to live and cars and money and food, and I would just go with it. And so I never went without anything. I was very abundantly supplied and and, and still am to this moment. But there was a lot of shadow stuff that I went through as well because that was part of it. That was part of the learning and the shifting and the healing so it was uh, it was it was just it was kind of like a an amazing combination of shadow and and, and miraculous things happening it was really really wild i'm hearing this uh phrase or term the shadow 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 works a lot in yeah. the, uh, the the spiritual field these days but uh, yeah. why don't you talk about give us some of the uh, experiences you had on the, on the shadow side of things if you don't <laughs> mind um yeah well you know i tell the dirty truth <laughs> a lot of the people that initially, you know, offered me assistance, it turns out that, you know, a lot of them had underlying agendas, um, which may not even, in, in some cases, were not even conscious to them, but a lot of it was past life stuff. And so I would get into these situations where people were supposedly, I say supposedly in quotes, because I knew where my supply came from. I, I learned it deeper and deeper that it it didn't come from anything on the earth and, and the planet or you know, so that allowed me to do what I did. It gave me the courage to do what I did. But I would come into these situations, and then I would see, oh my God, what this person is. And my cards, my angel cards, would always show me deceit and caution, deceit and caution. And then the next card would say compassion. So it was like I'm supposed to be walking this fine line between, yes, there is deception. Yes, you have to be cautious, pay attention, be awake, but also be in forgiveness and compassion because they, you know, they're this is the role that they're playing. So it's a fine line to walk, but I would have to step up each time and say, no, you're not going to do this. This isn't right. And in almost every case, the minute I started telling the truth and expressing the truth to them, then I was thrown out of the, you know, and that that situation got worse and more intense and more intense to the point where, you know. I was staying with uh, this man and his daughter, and and you know they were. I had I was compelled by spirit to speak up on some things that no one in their family was willing. Like one of their daughters was an incredible bully and was bullying everyone. And and one day she was bullying her sister really badly, and no one was there except me. You know that there was no adults there, and they, these were adults. They were 23 and 19, but they were acting you know <laughs> like they were 12. <laughs> But it was really intense, and I knew even bef way before it happened that morning that there was going to be some altercation between me and this this other girl, and Spirit was telling me, was showing me what I needed to do because no one else could get through to this girl, and no one else had the courage to get through to her, and the parents were just completely sidestepping their responsibility. And so I um, I went out walking, and my sister actually, because her symbol to me was a blue butterfly, and she actually brought a real blue butterfly, and it circled around me. So I went back in the house, and they were breaking things, and, you know, she was just going crazy. And Spirit said, now, go. And I'm like, you're kidding me, now? Yes, now. So I went, and I intervened, and the the girl full-on attacked me, hitting me, punching me in the head, kicking me. And, you know, little did she know that I had a lot of training in martial arts. And so I basically just subdued her. And while I was subduing her, I was delivering the message that you will not do this anymore. You cannot do it anymore. And if you do, your life will be miserable. <laughs> so that was one thing really crazy. I ran down to my room afterwards, and she was chasing me and trying to kick down the door. And I said to Spirit, my God, was that supposed to happen? And they just said yes. It was the only way she was going to hear it. And then the whole family turned on me, and they took my bed and my food, and they kept trying to make me leave, and Spirit was saying, no, you know, stand your powers, don't leave, and stand your ground, and so they evicted me, and <laughs> one hour before, or two hours, a couple hours before I was being thrown out by a constable, um, a friend called and offered me help out of the blue, and off I went on another. But these things continually happened, and then, you know, I went into the homeless shelters. You know, I actually had, that was one of my absolute biggest fears. I, you know, I did not want to do it, but when I got into these places, 
just unbelievable things that were going on there in the name of God, in the name of Jesus. The way they were treating these homeless people was just mind-blowing. And my sister, you know, right before she died, had been helping the homeless, so obviously it was very close to my heart. And So I was called upon by spirit to take a stand, you know, in these organizations, and I did, and, and it was just, you know, I got thrown out on the street in the middle of the night with nowhere to go, all my stuff. It was just crazy. But every time that happened, I would just allow spirit to guide me, and someone somewhere would step up and help. And then on I'd go, and it, it just went on and on. These situations just got more and more intense, and all the way along, it's like I knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew exactly what to do, and I was guided, and there were many, many miracles going on, you know, within all this stuff, Be- many, many beautiful things, you know, but it was just this deep, dark shadow of, you know, things that are just no longer going to work in the world, the bullying, the forcing, the, you know, the high- the, the, these homeless shelters, they created a hierarchy of human beings based solely on money. And because some people were able to pay to stay there because they were veterans and the VA paid. And then there was people who had less and less and less. And the less that they had, the more they were treated like dirt and thrown out in the middle of the night in the cold. And it, it just, you know, it was just, yeah. just incredible. And I just, I was there to take a stand. And I took a stand knowing that I had nothing. I had no money, no car, no food, nothing. And, and I, there were one time I even went into a church and was in there all day trying to figure out what to do, and they threw me out <laughs> into the cold at night. I mean, it just, it was just incredible. But every single time, I just went right to spirit, and they told me exactly what to do. And so I was of all always places, okay. of all places, yep. Elizabeth, a church threw you out of all places. Yes, and I went. Actually, you landed at this homeless shelter that was a Christian run shelter and they actually threw me out with four police officers solely because I spoke up and I said what you're doing here does not represent Jesus you 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 are not treating me with compassion and you're not treating other people with compassion dignity respect you're not you know Jesus life is about non-judgment compassion and unconditional love and you are not walking that talk you are treating me like a criminal you're treating these other people like a criminal I wasn't yelling and screaming. I was simply taking a stand. And they said, well, you have to get out. And I said, well, I don't have anywhere to go. And they said, we don't care. You have to get out. And they called the police and um, threw me out in the rain. (laughs) So, I mean, this is the point. You know, these institutions that are based in old energy, they're collapsing. They're crumbling. And I was just there to kind of witness it. Um, Because you can't have a lie, these lies that are going on. And they're going on in every from medicine to education to religion, and I'm getting all of this. <laughs> I'm getting experiences with all of this, to law enforcement, to, you know, the government. It, 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 it's, it's just the corruption is so deep and so incredible, and it's but it's crumbling. It, it can't withhold the truth. It can't withstand the truth and the light. But we kind of have to go through it in order to, you know, to allow it to go. Yeah, That's yeah. I we can't just flip the switch off one thing and no. then there's nothing to turn on no. the other. But it sounds like to me as if um, you're you're experiencing a journey of sensation. Sensation? Yeah, I mean, all these different things you're experiencing and, and yeah. sensations, I mean, and you're also teaching people along the way. It might not appear that right. way at the time, but those yeah. people that threw you out of... Um, yeah. I don't know, there seems to be quite a few. Right? There was quite a few. <laughs> They'll remember you. They'll remember oh, you. Oh, yo, take, yes. They'll Especially take the back. People, and, and then it takes Especially then. some of the people at the Salvation Army, some of the things that I said to them, no one had, you know, because no, these people that were there, they didn't have the courage. You know, they didn't understand where their supply comes from, and that's just their role. But I did. So I knew that I could take a stand. And, I mean, I they, they were all, you know, doing what they do, you know, the, the Salvation Army is about, you know, we're God's army. They have some very unusual beliefs there. Yeah, and, that's a and, bunch of garbage. Yeah, that's and I actually whatever. quoted, I quoted, I went in there and quoted from the Bible to them, and I, this is one of my favorite things that I said to them, you know, I quoted um, Matthew twenty five thirty five, which where Jesus was saying, you know, I was hungry and you gave me food, I was um naked and you clothed me, I was a stranger, you took me in, and then people are saying to him, well, Master, when when did we do this for you, you know, and he said, what you do on to the least of my brothers, you did on to me, and I, I brought that to their attention, and I said, the people that Jesus was talking about are these people who are coming to your door, 
and they're not they're the least because they have the least and you're not treating them as Jesus would have you treat because you know they're a Christian quote unquote organization and in this lady this this captain I mean she was looking at me and she was smiling but her eyes were not smiling and yeah. <laughs> that's when I got thrown out but I mean the point of the matter is I was there to speak the truth without knowing that my own personal safety was you know on the line but I didn't care because I understood that how safe I was I was told over and over and over you're safe you're safe you're safe and everybody really is safe that's part of the message it's like no matter what you have agreed to take on you are mm-hmm. so protected and guided it's only when you resist what you have planned you know the the things that are in your highest and best good and your soul's path you know you resist it out of fear do you suffer so much more than if you just allow yourself to be guided because I felt I was energized by it. <laughs> I was just thrilled to be able to. <laughs> I mean, I was scared out of my mind. Don't get me wrong. There were several times I was absolutely scared out of my mind. I mean, I got stranded, had to sleep in this maid's quarters at this hotel. I mean, it was just, you know, it was nuts. But the thing was, it was, you know, if you can listen to your inner voice through all this, it was so amazing to me. The miracles that just kept happening and the people, because all, all along the way, of course, there were the angels that stepped up and helped and did. You know, so it wasn't, you know, and and I understand these people are just playing their roles. I bless all of them, absolutely all yeah. of them, as equal, equally important in their roles. So. <laughs> and you've had a taste of uh, corporate life. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were making um, big money in your early years yeah. um, in, the, I think, the telecommunications industry. So you've you've had that, and sounds yes, to me you said that. I, that's not for me. That's non-fulfilling, and you walk the earth. Yeah, there was nothing fulfilling about it. I mean, I made a six-figure income, and um, and then, but I just it was so ego-based, meaning that oh, there yeah. was nothing. There was no heart center to it. And then I also worked in law enforcement, which actually a lot of things that I learned there, as you saw with that young woman, actually were were there for a reason. You know, because I needed to defend myself in that situation, and also they teach you com- what's called command presence. And there were many, many times where I needed that command presence, so it was actually very important. But there was a lot of um, things about that that are very old energy, and you know, even my sister experienced it in a in a in a, in a way even more than I realized, which is coming to light now. But it's, it's 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 just these things are no longer working, and they're not going to work, and they're falling apart, and that includes the financial institutions worldwide. You know, this is all happening exactly as it's supposed to. But if you can get yourself into an understanding that I have, which is my supply does not come from anything in this world, not a job, nothing. If you get yourself to that level, nothing can touch you. I mean, it doesn't matter what happens in the world because you're guided. You're shown the way. You will always have everything that you need. And I, I learned that to the to the nth, nth degree. <laughs> Sometimes in, in situations that were very scary, but... Um, my point in doing it was to show, you know, it doesn't matter if you lose your job, doesn't matter if you lose your home, doesn't, none of that matters. You are so taken care of, and you will so be guided if you try, try your best, you know, not to go into a panic and fear, and allow yourself to get the information that you need to go forward. Elizabeth, how if we're talking about this higher consciousness? Um, how could you, sh- and I don't, you, may, you may not know the answer to this question, but I'll answer, ask it anyway. How would, do you see society looking in 50 to 100 years from now, at least in North America and most of Europe, put it that way? You know, I tried to get the information like from the guides. For, you know, but they would not. They wanted me to focus in the here and now, and they wouldn't give me any of that. I mean, I think it's huh. going to be drastically different. I, I I couldn't begin to say how, but I I mean, as far as what it's going to look like. But the the you know the what's happening right now in the in the uh, you know the Mayan calendar and all this stuff that people are talking about. I actually watched a really powerful video on the Mayan calendar. Um, and it is my, it is just amazing. And then what it, how it mapped everything from the Big Bang until what's happening right now. But once we hit, you know, 2011, actually the Mayan calendar actually ends in 2011. It doesn't end in 2012, as everyone believes. It, it ends on October 28, 2011. And then we go into this. What what's going to happen in, in in 2011 and 2012 is like it's exp, the the raising of consciousness is exponential. 
it's like the critical mass effect. You know, once you get that domino rolling, and people are, it's just we're going to go into such a, a higher. There's going to be. A, I mean, the guides told me the peace and the love that we've been seeking will will come because we're moving, you know, into a whole different consciousness. And you know, we, we've been talking about this for a long time, but. And I don't really completely understand it, but supposedly, you know, we're all of us are moving into the fifth dimension, which is a much higher dimension. So what will it look like? I don't know, but I think it's going to be really, really amazing, and it's not the doomsday that everybody thinks it is. And yeah, it that's, yeah. Some because yeah. they choose to go, but. I mean, you talk about listening to your inner guidance. I would ask the audience to listen to the inner guidance here. The world will come to an end in 2012, December. The answer is no. Come on. Yeah, yeah whatever. Who was this guy that was saying it was all going to be over last week or the week before? <laughs> I, right? Whatever. I don't know, but I I think they just got confused with some of the other prophecies because, you know, there is a lot of – I mean, think about this calendar that was created, you know, by these people who had a higher level of understanding that from the Big Bang to the year 2011 and then it just stops. Well, that doesn't mean that anything – it's just it's just a one of the guides told me one of many evolutionary leaps. I mean, time and space don't really exist. So for us, from the Big Bang, which is I don't know how many billion years ago till now, seems like a long time. So it's right. like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. But they're saying no, this is just one of many evolutionary. Sh- it's it's a major one, no doubt. <laughs> and uh, there's people who you know who are channels who are saying all over the universe and all over, because, you know, there's billions of galaxies with all kinds of beings, and, you know, they're looking on with absolute awe what is happening on the Earth right now. Absolute awe. And the guides even told me they were amazed. They said, we, we, are, in, we are in awe. We did, could not think that you could get to where you've gotten already. And this was in, like, 2009 or, or even 2008, that they were absolutely just, you know, that we had done what we had done, all of us who are working in the light workers and so it's it's amazing. And it, there's nothing negative about it. I mean the darkness that that we see happening is just part of it. It's part of the whole. And the more you resist it and judge it, you're just creating more polarity. So don't do that. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that uh, one of the things that's that's um that's making a big difference in the world and society um, Mm -hmm. now and over the last hundred years that there's people like yourself who are standing up to the status quo and questioning them. And, you know, look, you reap the consequences of your actions. You get thrown out, blah, 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 whatever. But but if you look three, four hundred years ago, you would not dare question the king or queen of England. And even even in the last 40, 50 years, the tone towards even the President of the United States or the Prime Minister I, has changed from utter respect to more of direct questioning. So the, right. the, 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 the masses are becoming more open to questioning things and rejecting right. things and, you know, swear your allegiance to me. Here's my response. Get lost. <laughs> so you're getting you're getting a lot of that a lot of that more, and you're yes. getting some diehards that say the patriarchal society is the only way to yes. go. Nonsense, you know, a democratic yes, I... society is the way to go. But I, and I think that 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 really is without that we're not going to get very far, Elizabeth. What would you say to my assessment on that? The the what I missed what you said. The what? That's the, democratic... the under. Yeah, that's the under to question everything and have d- uh, open dialogue and discussion is is the way to go because you can't have one person sitting at the top of the chain or sitting in the, the head of the Salvation Army, God's Army, telling you to get <laughs> out, please. It's 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 not going to work. And it, the thing is, there's nothing that we really need to do though because it's going to crumble. There is absolutely not going to. Up, up, I mean, yes, we okay. do need to start having dialogues about what it is that we do want instead of all the mm-hmm. panic about what's ha- what we don't want. And um, we need to do that, and we need to we need to question. I mean, the Buddha said, you know, always question. And uh, so, but most of the work really, honestly, has to be done within because once everybody's doing the inner work, these things will just shrivel and die. I mean, they they can't they can't stand you know the corruption and there's it just goes so very deep. It's seemingly very deep, but really, it's just like a black cloud that will float away. But yes, we do need to question and we do need to talk. But we you know you got to understand that you know. All these people, and, and I was told this, and this is very important, all these people who are playing these roles, 
who seemingly are very dark and very rigid and they don't get it, they are playing those roles out of love. It's very important to understand that because without them willing to hold that space, the rest of us could not do what we're doing. And so they are part of the whole. And so it's it's not that we have to, um, you know, do what they, you know, it's not about doing anything. It's just about accepting that everything is part of the whole because the more you resist something, as we know, what you resist persists. So a lot of people find that there's certain public figures that it's okay to make fun of and say terrible things about. If we're really one, then we're really one, and we have to understand that everybody's playing their role. I mean, my own brother, you know, he just doesn't get, I mean, he's so angry and he feels victimized by the world because a lot of terrible things have happened to him. Everything that happened to me happened to him, but, you know, he didn't get, he wasn't in the spiritual understanding. And he's very upset about what's happening in the world and he's angry. And, and you know, I was told, you're, you and your brother are forerunners. And I thought, well, how can he be a forerunner? But I was told recently, you know, he is a forerunner. He's holding that space. He's doing it intentionally. He's put this cloak. It's like a a cloak of hypnosis, very deep hypnosis. We're all hypnotized because we all have a level of forgetfulness, but he and some has got a, a a deeper one. And it's his he is a forerunner though. So, you know, we do have to realize that that there's a lot of people p- playing these particular roles and just not to make all these judgments and and try to fight against it won't work. Elizabeth, when you take away the demand for a product, a system, an organization, they will go away. Yes. Yes, they they will. And and, and the more that we, you know, struggle and fight and and, and do all these things, you know, it's just holding it there, holding it there. It's like all these wars, you know, wars against drugs and wars against this and cancer. And I mean, it just doesn't need to happen. Just fighting against something doesn't work. We do need to wake up. We need to pay attention. See, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like, for example, I just recently had this whole this this, this couple that I'm staying with. This man, he's he's like a I don't even know what word to describe him, but he's an incredible intuitive. But he's also very scientific, and he's done a lot of scientific research on the medical, what's going on in like the AMA, the American Medical Association, and all this unbelievable i mean unbelievable what like the pharmaceutical companies are in bed with the fda and all these drugs that are being pushed they've never been scientifically tested and not only have they not been scientifically tested and that they aren't they aren't effective they're actually very very harmful and you got millions of people taking these drugs you know like psychotropic drugs and stuff and, and, and it's just it's just this big it's like billions and billions and billions of dollars are being exchanged the FDA and the AMA and all these big organizations, the American Cancer Society, it's like they're all tied into each other, and it's not about people's health. And we talked about health in the interview. You need to take charge of your – you have to take – the number one principle in the new energy is responsibility for the self. They said that over and over, responsibility for the self. Do not let yourself be, you know, <laughs> lied to. <laughs> you know, you need to take this drug. Well, wait a minute. Do your research. Don't just be a lemming and follow whatever you're told by a doctor or something. Mm-hmm. It, it goes very, very deep. So the Look, lot of I mean, health care, is, it's, it's all about the money, you know. Well, exactly. right, or, right or wrong, it's, it's, it's all about the money. And, and right. there's not going to be any medication or practice or technique that's taught and available to the masses that's free or doesn't cost much. It, it's just not going to happen. And that's wrong, but that's just the way it is. And you have to do, you have to look into it for yourself. I mean, that's um, right. Yeah. And 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 I did that myself just recently, Elizabeth, on a certain stretch technique, mm-hmm. and it cost mm-hmm. me nothing, and it solved the problem. And the thousands of dollars I threw at this problem didn't, didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah. But that sim- that simple uh, technique I learned by going up to another human being and exchanging information. And it happened just like that. Yeah, and the information is out there. Um, and like, for example, EFT, emotional freedom technique. You know, people have learned it a certain way. But it, this person that I'm staying with is a, a is an incredible healer, and he taught me. And a lot of people have taught this a much more expanded version of this EFT, which is just tapping on the acupuncture meridians. And it is a miracle what this can. Mm-hmm. I've already experienced it, and I'm writing about it. Because you know I have a uh, kind of like a pre-diabetic condition, and I, with just just 
the EFT, the tapping, the, you know, the acupuncture meridian tapping, um, that's kind of been expanded now, has shifted me to such an unbelievable degree in such a short time. Cost no money, no doctors, and that's just one of many things. But they're, they're there, they're out there. But you have to um, ask your higher self to guide you to what you need. I mean, there were many times where I needed something went wrong, and I didn't have health insurance, I didn't have money, I had nothing, and I was mm-hmm. always guided to the right person, the right set of circumstances that brought me what I needed every time. You don't need wow. health insurance. You don't need, you got health insurance, you're just going to go into the allopathic medicine, which I'm sorry, nine times out of ten is not only not going to help you, but it's going to make you worse. Unless you need surgery, emergency surgery, I would, I mean, it's just, it's mind-blowing. And I hope somebody writes a book about this, what I'm talking about, just that, because, and in fact, I have a friend who I think is is doing it, um, it's unbelievable the level of deception that's taking place in the name of money. And I, I know several other industries that are that way, as we all do, but that's one of the main ones. It's just unbelievable how they're, this is all um, a big lie. And a lot of people are taking medication that they, that is actually harming them to a severe degree, and they don't even know it. So, you know. Indeed. Indeed. That's okay, so you, you you did this wonderful audio book, Interview with the Universe, and for the audience, I have listened to this uh, audio book. It's it's great. Um, it's been a it's been a couple of years, but uh, but I do remember um, the sensations I experienced after it, during it and after it. It, it is wonderful. Um, Plena is, shall we say, extraordinary, she, and she um, you can buy. The uh, audio book on the website Interview with the Universe. There's a link from the uh, main page of the Universal Learning Series website, and will be so on the uh, archive show page as well. Now, Elizabeth, moving into the future, um, you're writing a book, correct? Yes, I'm writing the. It, it goes along with these Interview with the Universe recordings, but it's much, 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 much more than than just those questions and answers, as, you, as you've already heard me discuss. Everything okay. that I've experienced is in the book. And it's, okay. it's pretty mind-blowing. It's pretty mind-blowing. It's going to be mind-blowing for a lot of people. Because it was mind-blowing for me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you have a title yet for the upcoming book? Well, I mean, it's going to be an interview with the universe. Uh, you know, I don't know. There will be a subtitle. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that an interview with the universe is the title. It's it's just an extended version of the recordings because everything we talked about in the recordings is supported in the journey. And the guides told me that when people listen to the recordings and then also read the book, they will just access incredible level of catalytic energy that went into it. It's just okay. they said it would be very, very you know, strong. So as of right now, Interview with the Universe is the title and. You know, everything I do is kind of guided step by step, so I don't really have, like, you know, a big projection. But one of the things that I've wanted for many, many, many years and have seen myself doing this was to travel overseas. And, you know, it's funny because my twin sister and I, we were named after four English queens, Elizabeth Anne, Catherine Mary. And I've always had this incredible pull to the U.K., and I've just now been invited. And I had, you know, I had no means to get there, but within three days the means were provided and I'm on my way to stay with a friend over there and people are inviting me to come because every person that I've actually stayed with um, even the ones that didn't get it they all had windfalls of money of Uh transformation of new job opportunities I mean it's been really amazing so it's like I think you know it's kind of like if you're willing to share what you have even if it's a little bit um, it will you, that shows the universe and it kind of like goes exponentially and so you know I've been invited to come and I'm very excited I'm going to be traveling to to England this summer and my intention is just pretty much travel all over the world that's been a lifelong you know dream of mine and it's just happening so fast now and they told the guides told me this would happen that I would get what I wanted but I ha- you know <laughs> while I was going through some of this stuff I was just like sometimes almost like suicidal like you know is this what my life is <laughs> this is what it is these obstacles and these people they just said you got to be patient just keep going and i did so it's really happening the dream of mine is really happening just and i i'm doing this with no money at all i have no money <laughs> you know it's not about money you don't need money to accomplish your dream i guess isn't the point 
So you've never uh, you've never tasted British food yet, have you? <laughs> no, no, I've heard that it's not good. But no. you know, that's, I have That's I, another <laughs> lie. That's another lie. It's great. Oh, it's a lie. Okay. That's yeah, another good. lie. It's another <laughs> lie. So you go to an American restaurant and eat all that weird stuff. It's the best food on earth. It's great. Okay, Trust good. Yeah, good. Well, it's my friend she lives or... here. <laughs> it's, you don't get you don't get a burned mouth and you don't get an upset tummy after it. It's fantastic. Oh, good. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to remember you told me that. <laughs> and you'll find that the uh, the weather is mild. Um, you don't get oh. the extremes like you do in the uh, United okay. States. Um, I good. mean, a couple of uh, cold winters, but, but generally speaking, yeah. it, they don't get the oh. minus ten and ice and snow. Good. And, uh, I've been through that one. Yeah. Well, I, it's very interesting because when you know the, the Prince William got married, you know his, his his you know his bride Kate, her name is Catherine Elizabeth, which is huh. myself and my twin sister's name exactly. And to me, that was like a sign. Okay, now is your time to go to the UK. <laughs> so when are you going? Hold me. Um, in, in July. Yeah, I'm going. So, okay. Very are you excited. going? Are you going over there and with the not knowing when you're going to come back? Yes. <laughs> I'm knowing where I'm going. I have a friend over there who it turns out is very, very connected to my sister and me both. Uh, just an amazing human being and she invited me to come. She actually invited me to come while she goes, uh, we're going to, you know, visit and then I'm going to pet sit for her because she knows how much I love dogs. And But then all kinds of things are coming in for her. She got a new healing center that just fell in her lap. So there's more to it. There's going to be a lot more to it than just, you know, our visiting and my pet sitting, I'm sure. But um, she invited me to come, and so, uh, and I've had several other people invite me, and I'm just lining them up, you know. I'm going to go here and go there, and I just can't wait. I'm so excited to just, you know, to share with people all over the world, you know, that th- this messages and these things that I've learned. It's just very exciting. So all those shadow things that I went through, it was all for a very beautiful purpose, and I, I, I see that. You know, I see the perfection in the plan. It's well, there may perfect. be there may be one or two shadows yet still to come. It's going to make well, it interesting. They're going to make it interesting. I mean, you can't have there a plain sailing. There are always shadows, but I mean, you know, I pretty much knew that it was a polarity journey. Dark right. and then light. Like, very stark, so it would be very stark, you know, difference. Yeah. <laughs> and so I knew that. But, yeah, there's always, you know, we're in 3D, so there's always things that you have to... Um, pay attention to like that but I mean as far as the things that I've been asking for it was so frustrating because I I'm very you know I can see things way before they happen and I can feel them way before they happen and I knew this was going to happen but yet it, it just wasn't happening fast enough and sometimes you know being uh prophetic like that is is not a good thing because sometimes because when you're in something and you, you know this really amazing thing is coming but it's not coming fast enough <laughs> Yeah. It's devastating because you're like, when is this going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Oh, am I doing the right thing? Did I veer off? Did I Black. make the wrong decision? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah and, but still, within your heart, you know it to be true. So I did. I yeah. knew it was all the truth, all of it, every part of it. And it was all about, about this project that I'm working on that is, they said the main purpose of it was to lead people right into the shift. That was the purpose of the project. Okay, well, you make sure you uh, you make. My, I want to tell you, and I, I felt the urge to tell you this three or four minutes ago. You make sure you take your writing materials with you. Oh well, I have a laptop. And that's, well, that's good. Well, make sure you back it up. <laughs> yeah, I'm backing it up. I'm backing it up. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm going there to write. I mean, I, I know that there's going to be a lot oh, of writing good. To get over there. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, super. Super. All right. Well, um, Elizabeth, enjoy your time in uh, the United Kingdom and uh, where else you uh, may end up going, maybe Egypt or some other place. And uh, we wish you good luck and we look forward to having you on the show at some point in the near future, I hope, to talk about your new book and this uh, amazing thing that's going to be in it that you hinted to. Okay, yeah. so we've let the cat out the bag a little bit there, okay? Yeah, there's there's going to be a bombshell, but that's all I can say. <laughs> okay, nothing like a teaser to the media. Yeah. Great, great. All right, best of luck with your travels and have fun. Thank you so much for having me, Sandy. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a great day. Bye-bye. That was Elizabeth Ann Hill. She's an author and a spiritual warrior. She's the one to put together an interview with the universe with the late Glenna Dietrich. Hope she has fun in the United Kingdom. 
Thanks for listening to the Universal Learning Series radio show, where we discover the spiritual and scientific universe. Have a great day.